everyone, I am Shane and for today's video, I will be touring you around the Philippines from the first region all the way to the last region. First up, Region 1 or Ilocos Region. The first place I'll be introducing is the Bangui Windmills. The Bangui Windmills is located in Ilocos Norte province. These windmills are capable of producing electricity and the reason why this is located in Ilocos is that this province tends to give more wind than any other province. With that, it is perfect for making electricity from the wind. Its development is not only to have sustainable energy but to also boost the tourism industry. This place is nice to visit because it has nice view and perfect for family bonding and picture taking also. Now let's move on to the next place, Vigan City Heritage. Vigan is an island which used to be detached from the mainland by the three rivers, the Great Abra River, the Mestizo River, and the Govantes River. It is unique among the Philippine towns because it is the country's most extensive and only surviving historic city that dates back to the 16th century Spanish colonial period. The historic town of Vigan, Philippines, inscribed on the World Heritage List in 1999, has been recognized as a model of best practices in the World Heritage Site Management at the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the World Heritage Convention. Nothing is as good to visit but a place which is full of historical traces. It is only not nice to visit, but visiting also allow us to experience the history. For Region 2, we have Batanes. Oh, Batanes, it's a place I'd love to visit someday. Let me state some facts about Batanes. In the Philippines, Batanes is the smallest province. It is made up of 10 volcanic islands. It is a place where there is almost zero crime rate. It is considered as the most peaceful province of the Philippines. Batanes Island is closer to Taiwan than to the northern tip of Luzon. The houses in Batanes are very different to ours. House of Dakai is one of the only five structures that survived in 1918 earthquake in Batanes. It is considered to be the oldest traditional Ivatan stone house in Batanes. The traditional Ivatan stone house is made of stone and lime with kogan roof would withstand the strongest typhoon. It would be nice to witness these kinds of houses. Next, Basco Lighthouse location used to be the site of the American period telegraph facilities. It was the site of the American period telegraph facilities with the central government until it was destroyed by the Japanese during World War II. These are just some of the things you would not want to miss. Check out Botanas and it'll be amazing. Next up, the Gigarao City, specifically Kaliao Cave. Kaliao Cave is among the most popular caves in the Philippines and the best known tourist attraction of Cagayan Province. This site was where the remains of the oldest humans in the Philippines have been dug up. The cave features seven chambers, including man-made church, where special holy masses are held on special occasions. A rock formation serve as the altar of the chapel, lit by a stream of light coming from a rooftop opening. However, due to the slippery ground, they recommend the tourists to only see 5 chambers out of 7. It is understandable because it would be very dangerous to risk anyone's life. If you are into adventures like this, better add this space on your bucket list. For the next adventure, we will be heading to Region 3, Minalungao National Park. This park was established in 1967 to protect and preserve the scenic Pernaranda River and its surroundings. It is home to some of the most beautiful and pristine nature in central Luzon. It is one of the most important ecotourism destinations in the Philippines, which its name is from the words Mina and Lungao, meaning gold mine in caves. 
as it is promoted as an ecotourism destination by the local government, it should come up as no surprise to learn that the National Park has been wealth of fantastic outdoor activities for you to enjoy, with hiking, rock climbing, and zip lining all on offer. The place is also rich in beautiful rock formations, clean and clear water, and scenic view. A terrific place to escape your crowded and bustling city life. Take a break and find your bliss in Minalungao National Park. Mount Pinatubo Simply awe-inspiring to look at. Mount Pinatubo is a must-visit when in central Luzon. While the majestic mountains and volcanoes that dot the landscape are breathtakingly beautiful, it is the glimmering crater lake that lies at their heart that is the undoubted star of the show. Hemmed in by towering peaks, the turquoise waters shimmer and gleam beneath the midday sun, and the color of the lake remarkably changes throughout the year, depending on the season. Formed over millennia, the volcanic region makes for some beautiful hiking. Lots of mountaineers come to Mount Pinatubo to climb its various peaks, one of the most spectacular natural sights in the Philippines. Mount Pinatubo will set your heart racing. Moving on to Region 4A or the Calabarzon region. We have Pagsanhan Falls. This falls is also known as Magdapil Falls. It stands approximately 300 feet and is one of the major Laguna attractions weekend travelers usually visit. The falls are reached by a river trip on a dugout canal, known locally as Shooting the Rapids, originating from the municipality of Pagsanhan. This tourist spot in Pagsanhan Laguna is surely a perfect place to release your stress. Another place to visit is called Taal Volcano. Taal Volcano sits right in the middle of the Taal Lake in the province of Batangas, wildly regarded as one of the most futuristic destinations in the Philippines. Taal Volcano is the smallest active volcano in the world. Taal Volcano also has a crater lake which can be comfortable viewed aboard one of the Philjet's helicopters. Taal Volcano features a caldera that also has water in it. The lake within a lake view made the area tourist attraction. In Memoropa region, El Nido Palawan is very famous. El Nido has been named a number of times by travel publication sites as the best island beaches in the world because of its paradise-like attractions with white sand, turquoise waters, vibrant coral reefs, and stunning limestone cliffs. El Nido, the gateway to the awe-inspiring Bakit Archipelago, which houses 45 islands and islets, each with its unique geological formation. It's no wonder that El Nido has been ranked consistently as one of the best island destinations not just in the Philippines but in the world. There are a lot of things to do in El Nido from island hopping, lounging on beaches, hiking up cliff, and even scuba diving. To make most of your time in this island, start planning as early as today. Still in Palawan, we have Coron. Coron Bay in the Philippines is one of the world's most famous scuba diving sites due to the well-preserved fleet of World War II Japanese ships below the water. On September 24, 1944, U.S. forces detected 12 Japanese ships anchored in the bay. The Japanese moved the ships to Coron, thinking it could be too far away for an attack to protect them from the airstrikes that had sunk fleets in Manila. One of the many snorkeling and scuba diving sites in Coron is the Luzong Gunboat Wreck. It is a shallow spot with a shipwreck being between 5 meter and 15 meter deep. The boat is about 25 meters long. This shallow wreck dive is ideal for amateurs. In addition, the real life is fantastic with plenty of small fishes all around the Luzong Gunboat. It is usually done as a second relaxing dive of the day. Let us now move on to Region 5. First place, Don Sol. Don Sol was once a sleepy seaside village until the discovery of Botanding, aka Well Shark, by the group of scuba divers in 1998. It is often said to be the place in the Philippines where you can swim with whale sharks ethically. 
The things to do in Dunsol include swimming with the whale sharks. In Dunsol, swimming with them doesn't disrupt their natural migration patterns as they are not lured by fishermen who feed them. There are strict rules about swimming with whale sharks in this area to make sure that everything is ethical and safe for everyone. Firefly tour where you will be guided and see a glowing trees of fireflies. Scuba diving. Chow down at Barracuda. And lastly, you can go kayaking in the river. The next place is Inflatable Island in Subic. Inflatable Island holds the reputation of being the biggest and wildest inflatable playground in all of Asia. Its course covers an area of 3,400 square meters, which is around 8 basketball courts put together. It's filled with slides, towers, bridges, human launchers, swings, and more. If you want to play with your family this summer, it is the best place to feel like a kid again. Seeing how beautiful it is on the pictures makes me want to go there and experience the fun. Try it yourself and don't lose the inner kid in you. It would be fun trying these things out with your family. On our way to Region 6, Western Visayas. First things first, Boracay Islands. Boracay is a very famous beach here in the Philippines. Almost all tourists, especially abroad, would mention this place when talking about where to visit when we go to the Philippines. Boracay has all the necessary elements of tropical paradise, sapphire ocean waters, and bright sunshine. Boracay is shaped like a meaty bone. The central part has the gentle white beach while the north and south are covered with lush motion forests stretching out four kilometers from start to finish. White Beach is the highlight of Boracay. Sail out on the ocean to catch a view of an unforgettable sunset. You can also climb up on the top of Mount Luho for a bird's eye view of all the Boracay or experience a vast variety of exciting water sports. Boracay is a must-visit place when you want to experience beach life this coming summer. In Bacolod City, we can find Don Mariano Ledesma Laxon Ruins, a curious attraction that can be found in the province of Negros Occidental, the remains of a burnt-out mansion from a long ago. The mansion dates back to the 1900s when it was built by the sugar baron, Don Mariano Ledesma Laxon, for his first wife, Maria Braga, a Portuguese from Macau whom he met in his vacation, in Hong Kong. The mansion's structure is an Italianate architecture enhanced by a Beldivere complete with Renaissance-type balustrading typical of the homes of English ship captains. It was burned down in World War II to prevent the Japanese from using it. It was opened to the public by the descendants of the original owner and is listed as among the world's 12 most fascinating ruins. Next, we have Region 7, Central Visayas. Of course, the very famous Chocolate Hills in Bohol. For those who have been curious of what Chocolate Mountains look like in real life, then going to Bohol is the answer. Chocolate Hills is located in the island of Bohol in the Philippines. Although these hills have really nothing to do with chocolate, but during a particular time of the year, they appear to look like chocolates, the reason why they are often associated with each other. In reality, they are just leftover limestone deposits from a time when streams and rivers were far above sea level. Rainfall and other natural resources slowly created the dips and valleys the island has become famous so far. There's no clear count as to how many hills there are exactly, but there's a place where we can enjoy the view of the hills. On the other hand, if you are into thrilling and extreme activities, skydiving in Bantayan Island is perfect for you. In the lovely island of Bantayan in northern Cebu, there are world-class skydiving activity for the spirited and dauntless individuals who dream of flying like a bird. Skydive Greater Cebu brings this riveting adventure to the island, giving the tourists the ultimate sensation of a free fall and the opportunity to see more of the beautiful island of Bantayan from a bird's point of view. 
The sensational adventure is facilitated by Brand Vansina, a USDA tandem instructor and safety and training advisor or SNTA. Conquering your fear of heights is no easy task. Skydiving is an extreme adventure for the brave, but this could also be set as a goal to help you overcome your fear. With Skydive Greater Cebu, you can test your limits with them as they have the experience, expertise, and the right facilities to keep you safe and sound the entire ride. On to Region 8, Eastern Visayas. First stop, Armok City. There's so much to do when you go in Armok City. Some activities or adventures that awaits for every tourist include First, experiencing the nightlife at Cuadro Armo, a night food bazaar in the town that offers a lot of food choices. Second, swim, chill, and kayak at Lake Danau. Third, join and celebrate the Piña Festival. Armok City is a place where pineapples are very, very abundant and famous. Fourth, enjoy the beautiful view of Heaven's Peak. Fifth, go to Lake Kasudsuran. These are just some of what you can enjoy in Armok. If you are interested, better look for more information so that you can start planning as early as today. Next, Limasawa Island. Lemasawa is an island municipality in southern Leyte. It is a small yet flourishing town being the site of the first Christian mass in the country and in Asia. The first cross and the first mass shrine are some of the frequently visited spots that give tourists a rare experience of retracing the historic footsteps of the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan in 1521 who paved the way for the beginning of Christianity in the country. Fun fact, Mazawa is the original name of this municipality. We are now in Region 9, Zamboanga Peninsula. First, Museo Nerezal in Dapitan. As we all know, Jose Rizal was banished to Dapitan in, in northwestern Mindanao on 17th of July 1892. He used his time and skills to ease his stultitude for four years. Rizal kept himself busy with various pursuits and occupations as an educator, doctor, farmer, artist, architect, engineer, entrepreneur, archaeologist, and naturalist. Rizal's productive years in the Pitan transformed the life, attitudes, and consciousness of the Pitanans. His exemplary life was dictated by his simple pleasures. The Museo in Rizal the Pitan reflects Rizal's life in exile through his personal memorabilia and correspondence with his family and friends, his Nipa hut, residence, clinic, School, dormitory, dam, and waterworks are living testaments to Rizal's expansive range of talents and his commitment to serve the country he loved. Next, Santa Cruz Island dubbed as Pink Beach. This pink beach has been named as one of the best beaches in the world. Santa Cruz Island is covered in beautiful pink sand that result from all the crushed red organ pipe coral that wash ashore and it can be found in Zamboanga, Philippines. It is considered as its hottest tourist destination because of its one-of-a-kind property. The pink coralline sands, the clear blue waters, and the clear and sunny skies are perfect for anyone who wants to chill out and unwind. And aside from relaxing, visitors could also snorkel and scuba dive here. Let us now move on to Region 10, the region where my province belongs. First up, Kaluya Shrine. The shrine is a 60-foot replica of Rio de Janeiro's statue of Jesus Christ the Redeemer. It is located on the top of a hill in Barangay Kaluya and overlooks Murcielagos Bay and Dior River. Here, you can also enjoy a breathtaking view of the mountains, Kaluya Bay and Marcialagos Bay at Kaluya Shrine. The view from the shrine will also allow us to see where the floating cottages are. This is also another tourist spot named Kaluya Floating Cottages, where you can rent a floating cottage and enjoy swimming. They also sell food in case you did not bring any. We also have Piduan Corten Falls. 
This 60 meter curtain light falls is located in Sichu Piduan, Barangay Napanga, Don Victoriano, Misamis Occidental. Nestled in the heart of Malindang Mountain Range, Piduan Falls is a mystical experience with crystal clear waters that is cool and even safe to drink. The 4km trek to the falls takes more or less 2 hours of walking among the untouched beauty and serenity that is typical of Misamis Occidental Forest. You will not only enjoy the falls but also exercise before swimming or going to the falls. Moving on to Region 11, we have Pearl Farm Beach Resort. If you want to keep yourself away from the busy city life, then this place is perfect for you to unwind. Pearl Farm Beach Resort was once home to a pearl farm, where precious pearls were nurtured and cultivated as the ocean's most beautiful gems. Today, it is Samal Island's jewel, an exceptional destination just off to the coast of bustling Davao City. Here, luxurious comfort, breathtaking Filipino design, a protected natural environment, and the rich culture of Southern Philippines meet. Together, they create a relaxing, private earth reef unlike any other in the Philippine archipelago. Eden Nature Park If you want to commune with the nature, you have to visit this next destination. Eden Nature Park and Resort in Davao City has been named after the famed Biblical Garden. Trying out Eden Nature Park activities is highly recommended because its serenity and tropical forest climate will certainly remove anybody's anxiety from the stress and noises of the busy city. Whether you want to meditate alone or take a break with your family and friends, a tour in Eden Nature Park is worth it. From the first region, we are now in Region 12 or Saksar Gen Region. The first place I will be introducing to you is Seven Falls Zip Line in Lake Cebu. Lake Cebu is a natural lake located in the South Cotabato and within the Ala Valley region. The Philippine government has recognized it as one of the country's most important watersheds. Lake Cebu is one of the many bodies of water supplying important irrigation to the provinces of Sultan Kudarat and South Cotabato. In Barangay Lake Lahit, Lake Cebu, South Cotabato, lies a zip line for adrenaline junkies who are in a rush and ready for the adventure of their life. Dangle and slide 20 meters per second as you reach mountains and mountains through the zip line. Or if you're feeling brave, take pictures and videos to capture the moment. Hikung Alu is the first of the seven waterfalls, as its meaning is passage. It stands at 11 meters and it can be a spot to stop and cool down. Fly like Superman when the zip line starts and reaches the end. At the end of the second fall, there are some souvenir shops that tourists can visit. Next, Asik Asik Falls. Asik Asik Falls or Dulao Falls for the locals is situated in Sichu Dulao of Barangay Upper Dado in Almada, North Cotabato. It is nested in the lower slope of the Mount Ragang, also called Mount Pia Payungan or Blue Mountain, an active stratovolcano that sits in the boundary of Lanao del Sur and North Cotabato. There are various tales and side stories of the discovery of this natural wonder. Some say that it was accidentally discovered by military during a clearing operation while others say locals already know the place ever since. A beauty of such grandeur is impossible to have gone unnoticed. The locals probably just kept it as a secret or ignored it thinking it was just a normal scene. But more than its captivating splendor, Asik Asik Falls is a unique phenomenon. You won't see a river or a stream above the towering wall. In Region 13, we can find the beautiful place of Shergao. Shergao is named after a native mangrove, the surf capital of the Philippines. It is perfect for lovers of the great outdoors, whether you embrace adventure sports or gentler pursuits such as swimming in rock pools and caves. Today, I will be sharing to you 10 things you must try and do when you plan to visit Shergao. First, surfing. Most of the people I know going to Shergao opt to try surfing. 
Second, see sunrise and sunsets. Sunrise and sunset by the beach is surely amazing to witness. Third, island hopping. There are tons of islands in Siargao. Fourth, Sugba Lagoon. Fifth, go cliff jumping or try the Tarzan jump on the Maasin River. Sixth, go to Tayabagan Cave Pools. Seven, Tak Tak Waterfall. Eight, Bukas Grandes Lagoon. Nine, Pacifico Beach. And tenth, shop at local Tabo, a community market where local farmers and artisans sell their produce and crafts. On the other hand, if you want to go and see nature, I recommend Higanteng Bato. Giant Rock, or commonly re referred to Higanteng Bato, is one of the popular landmarks in Agusan del Norte. It is indeed a giant and largest boulder rock in the province. Under the rock is a flowing clean and refreshing stream. There is not that much thing to do in the site but to admire this gigantic rock and surrounding greenery. For the next adventure, we'll be heading to the National Capital Region. We have Fort Santiago. Fort Santiago is the oldest Spanish bastion in the Philippines. Situated inside the world city of Intramuros, Manila, the site witnessed many historical events of the Philippines. The exact spot where Fort Santiago now stands was once a Muslim kingdom ruled by a chieftain named Raja Suleiman. When the Spaniards landed in the Philippines in 1571, they destroyed the site and built a fortress instead, naming it after Spain's patron Saint James. The structure served as their defense fortress. Over the centuries, Fort Santiago gained a fearsome reputation among Filipinos. The Philippine national hero Jose Rizal was imprisoned here immediately before his execution. After near total destruction at the hands of the Americans during the World War II and ensuing decades of neglect, Fort Santiago is now slowly coming back to life. Fort Santiago's fearsome reputation hasn't stopped Filipinos from using it as a shrine to the country's history and culture. This place is perfect for someone who wants to reminisce the past and unravel the history. Still inside Intramuros, San Agustin Church is located. During the Spanish Golden Era, the, the colonizers' mission to spread Catholicism in the Philippines. Therefore, a place of worship was needed to establish for the propagation of Christianity. As a result, many churches were built in the country to let Christianity bloom and flourish. San Agustin Church was one of them. Like other churches during that time, San Agustin was also made from local materials. Due to invasion by the crusaders, natural disasters, and earthquakes, the church had to be rebuilt for three times not until in 1607 that its construction was officially completed. It remains the oldest church in the country of the Philippines. Next, we will go to the Cordillera Administrative Region or CAR. The ever-famous Baguio City, it is a place where you want to go during hot days. It is a travel experience being in a city perched on top of mountains and among the clouds with an elevation of 1,600 meters above sea level, which is the reason why this place experiences colder weather unlike every other places in the country. There's so much things to do in Baguio City. It includes boating at Burnham Park, Feast on local cuisine at the former's daughter, explore Camp Jan Heng, head to Mines View Park, visit strawberry farms in La Trinidad, appreciate art at Benka Museum, discover Tamawan Village, go bargain hunting at Dagya Night Market, try horseback riding at Wright Park, spend time at the mansion, check out the colors of Stubusa, and many more places to visit. Exciting, right? For our next destination, we will be heading to Sagada. Sagada is situated in mountain province of Cordillera Administrative Region in North Luzon. Sagada offers a relaxing escape from the hustle and busy city life. Sagada's weather is similar to Baguio, clean on both dry and wet seasons. 
Being in a mountainous region, it's a heaven away from the humidity in other Philippine cities. And where agriculture is the booming business of bountiful fresh vegetables and fruits. And you will be amazed with all its wonders. But to tease you, I have listed what you can do in Sagada. First, you can go spelunking in Lumiang and Samaging Caves. Try the strawberry banana granola yogurt of Yogurt House. Walk along the rice terraces. Freeze in the cold water of Bomod Oak Falls. Try the Saturday night buffet in Lag Cabin. Enjoy the lemon flavored pie and tea at Sagada Lemon Pie House. See the hanging coffins up close. This is the most place in Sagada for the mystery it brings. Visit the cemetery and Calvary Hill. Catch the sunrise over the sea of clouds at Kiltepan Peak. And lastly, enjoy a walk around the town. Last but not least, Bansamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. In here, we have Blue Lagoon. It is one of the best Maguindanao tourist spots located on an idyllic setting of rustic views. It's almost like a lake surrounded with lush forests. The good thing about it, well, it's just a walking distance from the National Highway. Experience swimming on its pristine and rejuvenating waters as you relish the forest beauty. The waters come from a spring connected to Tamantaka River. Also, they have Kutawato Caves. Kotawato Cave is the only cave system found at the heart of the Philippine city. All the All cave the entrances are within the vicinity of Cotabato City, to which the cave lent its name. Kotawato Cave lies on the slope of Pedro Colina Hill. It's a small cave that looks like a dwelling place of ancient people. Inside, you'll find interesting limestone rock formations. During the World War II, the Japanese used the cave as a torture site for prisoners and those who resisted the occupation. It is one of the emerging Maguindanao tourist spots. It's also nice to try these things. Wow! That's it for today's video everyone. I hope you enjoyed touring with me. Indeed! The Philippines is full of many wonders. Go experience it yourself. This has been Shane, your tour guide for today. See you next time!